Now we're back. We're I ba believe we're back. I'm going to talk on the radio as if we are back because that's safer than not to <laughs> talking on the radio like we're not back. Lincoln County student section comes out on the floor. Again, it's a, uh, again, this, Caleb, this is the, the, as you said, in some ways it's the best part, in some ways it's the worst part. Oh, yeah. Uh, because you've got seniors for Danville that have played their last That's game. It. That's uh, it. That's uh, it. And, uh, and, and in our game, there are seniors on both sides. And somebody for Garrett or somebody for Bull is going to play their last high school basketball game tonight. Uh, and uh, that's just the, the difficult part. I can still remember uh, oh, yeah. playing Boyle County uh, a couple years ago, my son's senior year, and, and that last game, once the once the horn goes off, uh, it's difficult. Yeah, and, and it really the is. Locker rooms are, you know, the locker room visits are long locker room visits, and uh, it's, it's just. Uh, and, and I want to apologize, guys. We brought you in to enjoy the last minute. And by goodness, if we've not had technical difficulties all night long trying to get set up, you had no audio. What you missed was a really exciting finish. You got to see it <laughs> with the final score. Lincoln County will move on to the championship game on Wednesday night. And, again, my apology, guys. We, we thought you all were, we were doing you a, a <laughs> favor, and all we did was kind of tease you there. Well, they got more than what they were expecting. because they, they did. You tuned in for Garrett Boyle, and we're going to give you that and hopefully give you all of that, but uh, gave you a little added uh, free basketball, as they say, uh, finishing up that first game. So. Well, what I'd like to see here is, you know, hey, you know, great win, but they need to clear the court. I uh, wasn't crazy about the student section running out there on the court. You know, there's two games here tonight. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, hey, celebrate. Let's get everybody off the floor. Let's get Garrett County, Bull County on the court. Let's get ready for the second matchup here. And there's a couple of people now, uh, a couple of Lincoln County administrators kind of picking stuff up. But, you know, we really probably need to run a mop over it. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and, you know, that's the other thing. You know, you have all these people running out on the court. You know, you get a lot of dust on the court. You know, now you got to try to clean the court up right. uh, going to that second matchup here tonight. But, you know, it, it, as you guys both alluded to, man, it's going to be a special night here at Lincoln County High School. Right. right. It's, uh, and, and they haven't started. Boyle is coming on the floor now. Um, but the floor is still not cleared in this one corner with the Lincoln County oh, yeah. student section. So they haven't started the 20-minute clock. Garrett comes out now on the floor. Garrett wearing his yellow uniforms. Dabble wearing the home white, or excuse me, Boyle wearing the home white as the two seed, Garrett the three seed in the night's matchup. Now the clock has started, but there's still, I guess we got most of the floor. <laughs> um, and of course, this is all, the, the most crowded we are in oh, these games okay. is the end of the first game going into the beginning of the second because nobody's leaving from the first game. Everybody's showing up ready for the second game. I'm looking at 7.33. We're gonna start about 20 minutes oh, late. Yeah. Um, so it's that's be a long night tonight. There's a lot, yeah. of, lot of hustling around and, and trying to get things accomplished. And uh, well, I tell you what, why don't we take a reset, a deep breath, since we came on the air there Let's real quick. It. Let's get settled. Let's get let you get ready. It's high school basketball, 45th district action tonight. It's Garrett County. It's Boyle County. Coming up next, right here on the Golden Line Sports Network, Jeff Moss and Dr. Caleb Grasham Whoa. are going to have everything you need to know on the Bob Allen pre game. Game report coming up next right here on the Golden Line Sports Network. All right, good guys. I'll text my bride, try to get some updates from her on how it's coming out. Well, so. I, I sent her a text because she okay. said we, she said we can't hear you. But yeah, we can. We okay. can now. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Oh, you're fine. Yeah, it just was, you know. Hey, there was nothing we were saying that was worth listening to. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, anyway. It's a thought that counts. <laughs> hey, you know what? We're broadcasting. The signal is good. We go. have audio. We're here for this game. So I need to make sure I give Philip back this thing here. But Oh, gosh. Unbelievable. That was just – I don't know what was going on with the Internet. And why is it working now? I don't know. Why is, it, why, is it, why is it totally good now? It always does, man. I always have faith in it. I know you do, and I appreciate that. You were staying <laughs> nice worried, and calm. I, I was get getting worried. worried. I mean, I mean that's, that was about the longest fiddling we've had. So, all right, as far as you know, then everybody's good, right? We're good, bro. They can hear us, right? All dealmaker price. Click and save today at BobAllenMotorMall.com. 
guys can hear us talk over the commercial. Central Kentucky Federal Savings yeah, Bank. Please. 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 That's, that's important. Yeah, yeah, that's important. Hard work. Especially for a Kentucky Federal Savings Just like our golden and lady line teams, we're proud to be part of the tradition that makes our community special. Central Kentucky Federal Savings Bank. Your hometown friends. So again, if you're listening, you can hear us talking over the commercial. And that's why Hunt Insurance Agency is proud to serve the insurance needs of local businesses, families, and individuals. We build relationships with the last because getting to know you is your personal needs. Brother and all down here with his iPad watching over his shoulder. Since now look at that. That's why I got no internet signal. That's dedicated itself to providing personal service. That's my brother-in-law's sister. It's in there. They're sucking up all the internet. There you go. Well, that's pretty convenient of them to sit there for you. I don't even know if they know we're back here. We were working on it when they – I just looked up and saw them. Tone them instruments. All right, so nobody chimed in. They couldn't hear us, right? It's all good now. I can still hear I can still hear you. Be careful what you say is what my wife sent to me. Yeah. They doing? I don't understand. I, I don't know. Have to put us in the. It'll be. It'll be uh, quiet time. We'll play the. Play the quiet game. So they the can commercial. hear us now. Is that That's what, what Scott said? Oh. Stand by. We are back from coming to you live from Lincoln County High School for tonight's second semifinal between your Gary County Golden Lions as the three seed and the Boyle County Rebels as the two seed. So we come here for our Bob Allen Motor Mall pregame. Uh, Caleb, a really good game before, expecting a really good game here in this second game. And let's also talk about our hand insurance keys to the game. Yeah, I tell you what, Jeff, you know, you know, we talk about this all year leading up to the district tournament. That's what makes high school basketball so special is this kind of environment that we have here tonight at Lincoln County High School. You got an absolute pack gym. Uh, you got two, uh, you know, you have four fan bases uh, that are really excited, really cheering on their team. So much energy in the gym. We saw the first game between Lincoln and them will go into overtime. Uh, and then, you know, you got this game uh, kind of uh, leading right into it here. We got a few shout outs here, so let's kind of get to that, Jeff. Our man, Elijah Jones. He's always, always first. Always first in line. So, Elijah, you're all over it. There's a pretty important uh, Moss, Bridget Moss. Very important Moss. My, my princess is harkening back to prior broadcast. And listen to this. Kathy Denham has checked in saying, go, go Lions. And, Kathy, we are enjoying oh my. the fudge that thank, Kathy Denham thank has you, hooked Kathy. us up with. Don't tell Dr. Workmeister, but I really appreciate it, <laughs> Kathy Denham. <laughs> hey. Good for the palate, not necessarily for that. She told me it's fat free fudge. Oh, well, yeah. hey. We ain't got so I can eat more then. Yeah, yeah. Well, good oh, to know. Told me that. Good to know. <laughs> hey, and then Sean Seacorn uh, has oh, checked yeah. in and said, Oh, yeah, dig it. He's pumped. He's predicting a five point win tonight uh, for the Gold Lines. And Nikki Norris has checked in saying, Let's go, GC. Caleb, we're coming into a game tonight uh, after the 2005 season. Gary County switch district from the 46 with Harrodsburg, Mercer, and Bergen came over to the 45th and have won some games in the district tournament but have not been able to qualify for region. Uh, last trip going was with our friend Scott Bolin uh, when he was coaching the boys team back in 05. So um, it's a pretty long drought. It's a long drought. And, and during that time, we've played Boyle County seven times, Lincoln County eight times, and Danville twice, and have not been able to get a win in a semifinal game to put you into the finals, which, which uh, of course, run, winner, district winner, and district runner up advance to region. So, uh, you know, tonight, uh, you know, the, the streak's going to end. Uh, and, and, I, and uh, you know, it's just, is tonight going to be the night oh, yeah. for that to happen? Well, and I tell you what makes it even more unique here tonight. Uh, you know, co head coach of the uh, uh, Gary County Gold Lions, head coach Brandon Cooper, was the head coach in 2012. Right. And so Coach Cooper in 2012 
at Lincoln County during the district tournament brought in a Gary County team that was the number two seed in the, uh, in the district tournament, had beaten Bull County twice in the regular season, and then in overtime got beaten by Bull County here at Lincoln County High School. So the, so tonight, it's kind of, the, it, we've got a flip row here, right? right? The Bull County's coming into tonight's matchup as a two seed. Garrett is the three. Bull County beat Garrett twice, down by a total of what? Four points. Yeah. So, so by, one not, point in the first game at at Boyle, and three points in our first home away from home game at Maria College, yeah, so, which is our home game. So about as close as you can get right. uh, during two matchups here. So, and, and I tell you, you know, one of the things we've got plenty of time here, still got 12 minutes for the game. But one of the big hunt insurance keys of this game is going to kind of be to play under control and to be calm. All of the energy in this gym. Uh, so much excitement. I think it's going to be important to be able to kind of what team comes out and controls the emotions and executes. Yes, it's all about passion. It's all about playing hard. But at the end of the day, you've got to execute. you got to right. execute the game plan. Right. And and we saw watching the first uh, first game, Lincoln and Danville, a lot of talented, experienced players that have played a lot of basketball. And when we came down to the fourth quarter in overtime, a lot of shots that were going in from the line and from the field didn't. Uh, and, and it's 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 uh, it you know it, it makes it uh, it's just different it's just a different environment. You don't play many games in any sport in any career where this is your last chance. And 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 of course the great thing about district tournaments is everybody qualifies. Uh, you know if you can win some games, any, anybody can go to region. Uh, but you know you know what's on the table when you don't. And uh, so, so that's that's a big key. Uh, big key tonight uh, is, like you said, is handling those emotions, doing what you do, not coming in feeling like we got to have a superhero. Because right. again, a one-point game and a uh, 64-63 on January 3rd, two weeks later at 60-57. So we can compete. That, oh, that's yeah. not an issue. That's been proven. And, and there's some, as you look back through those years of other games in the region since we've come over to 45th, there's been some games really that we couldn't compete or that yeah. we didn't compete. Some some. Ugly losses, uh, but Garrett has come. Uh, Boyle has beaten us by seven twice uh, in 18 uh, and in 12 when Coach Cooper was here. So you know those are games. And then you look, you, you bring that down to the narrow focus, the kind of the micro focus of tonight's game and what we've done in the past, and should be an excellent contest. Yeah, no doubt. We'll, we'll say this and take a break, Jim. But I was talking to uh, Scott Bowler today, and you know, for probably for five or six of those years as Garrett entered the 45th. Garrett at Bull County were probably two of the top ten teams in the state uh, when Ronnie Bottoms is at Bull County as the head coach. So uh, it's been tough sledding in a 45th district tournament, and let's hope that that changes here tonight at Lincoln County High School. I agree. Let's take a break to hear from our sponsors. Again, we want to thank our sponsors because this broadcast would not happen from us, and I want to give a shout-out right now so I don't miss it to my man Jeff Jackson, who is dripping with sweat, one, because it's hotter than heck up here in the top of this gym, but two, because he's been busting his butt to be able to now, bring this game to you. Now, Jeff Jacobs, not Jeff Jackson. What did I say, Jeff Jackson? You did. Jeff Jackson has <laughs> done nothing to help this broadcast. <laughs> I have, Brad, I have Brad been Smith called. has done a lot, but not Jeff Jackson. <laughs> I have been called worse, and I understand uh, and appreciate oh, the shout-out, my friend, because tonight I've been like the human antenna trying to get a signal. <laughs> Gloom, despair, and agony on me. I apologize <laughs> uh, for calling my good friend Jeff Jacobs, Jeff Jackson. But Jeff Jacobs has worked his yes, butt off has. trying to get us a signal to be able to get this done, and appreciate them. But let's take a break to hear from those sponsors, and then we'll be back to you here live on the Golden Line Sports Network uh, following these messages. They say that new and pre-owned vehicles, all dealmaker price. Click and save today at BobAllenMotorMall.com. At Central Kentucky Federal Savings Bank, Wait we understand the meeting of commitment, hard work, and extra effort, Testing just one, like two, our Golden two, and Lady two, Lion teams. We're proud to be part of the tradition that makes our community special. Central Kentucky Federal Savings Bank, your hometown friends, your hometown bank. Garrett County is our special place. And that's why Hunt Insurance Agency is proud to serve the insurance needs of local businesses, families, and individuals. We build relationships that last because getting to know you and your personal needs is what we do best. Hunt Insurance Agency. Since 1951, Danville Office Equipment has Testing dedicated itself to providing personal service and superior office products for our customers. We take a lot of pride in their success because that's how we measure all. Danville Office Equipment, Danville, Lebanon, and Somerset. With the delay, it's not got the commercial yet. Check, check. Can you hear Scott Bowling? 
We'll know in about 90 seconds. I'm waiting here from Not Bridge, second. too, so we'll see what. You've come to know. We are Whitaker Bank. We are GC. At Toyota of Somerset, we've been blessed to serve our community and blessed to be able to support the local schools and their sports programs. It's just our way of saying thanks. At Toyota of Somerset, we're all about you. Hey, I'm Maria Montgomery, and you're watching Main Street Media TV. Welcome back to Lincoln County High School for tonight's semifinal district action between your Gary County Golden Lions and the Boyle County Rebels. We're about six and a half minutes uh, still running on the play clock. Referees are kind of taking their last break. Both teams are in the locker rooms. Uh, and Caleb, uh, looking back over again, those last two matchups, uh, Gary needs to tweak a little. Uh, I, I think back to the to the game against, uh, the game at Berea, um, they had a player, Dalton Stone, hit a three. Uh, yes. He's hit three threes on the year, including that one. And that was one where, uh, you know, our scouting report and talking to players, they said, we want him to shoot. And he drilled it from the wing, uh, and then you get big a three-point guy. It was a big, big shot going down the last four minutes. Uh, in the first game, Jared outscored a shot better from three and from two, but couldn't make our free throws. And, and I'll say I didn't see that game. I'm just looking at the stats. But we're one of six from the line, and when you're one of six and lose a game by one, a game that we were ahead a, a, a lot of the game, it's it's uh, it, it just it hurts. And uh, so so all we've got to do is maintain what we've done and tweak a little more, and hopefully it'll be successful tonight. Yeah. So so when you get into postseason play, every possession counts. Uh, so you've got to value every possession. Uh, you've got to work for good shots on offense. You, you got to limit second chance opportunities from the other team. You got to limit the turnovers. You can't have empty possessions. You can't have a turnover that lead to extra easy points right. uh, for the other team as well. I want to give a shout out to my man Connor Young. Uh, we've given Mason Young a lot of love here. Uh, Connor is the son of Holly and David Young. Uh, and I'm going to tell you something. Connor is a heck of a fisherman. And I've heard he's nothing but a three-point shooter in the rec league, too. Okay. So, I All mean, right. It, well, there it, you go. This guy's a basket getter. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's my nice joke. So, let's hope Gary County uh, kind of does the same thing here tonight uh, in terms of getting some baskets as well. So, but, but what you said, Jeff, I mean, you're exactly right. Every single possession, especially when you th – these two, te these two teams – are very aware with one another. They're acclimated with one another. Right. You know, two games inside of our four points. You know, it's going to come down to every possession counts. And and we you're looking at and just a little bit of look at Boyle's lineup. Uh, Case and Myers is their leading scorer, 14 points. Uh, well, no, he's 14.1. Montavian Quisenberry, name familiar to Garrett County, uh, is 14.3 points. Jakey Tarter with 11.3. Tarter averages 13 and a half rebounds a game. He's the number two rebounder. Rebounds per really uh, active, really active, and, and is, is uh, I've noticed some on some of the Boyle County sites that he is chasing um, school record, the school record for rebounds held by Colton Elkins. I'm wow. sorry, I was losing the name. And Colton played uh, not that long ago here. Uh, uh, played at Boyle and had a lot of matchups with him as well. Uh, and uh, so uh, looking at Garrett again, of course, led by Ethan Cooper. Uh, who scores, uh, averages about 25 points a game. He's the number 17 scorer in the state. And, Caitlin, something I didn't realize until getting ready for tonight, uh, Mason Sula uh, averaging 10 points and eight rebounds a game, shoots 71% on two-point field My goals goodness. for the year. That's number three in the state. Wow. Uh, now, when you look back to the first two games with Boyle, uh, Mason had five points, eight rebounds in the second, 3.6 rebounds. So now play that forward to our DCA game. Oh, Mason okay. was a big factor what in that force. game. The Danville game, we attempted to make Mason a big factor in that game. Uh, Jakey Tarter is is a, is a warrior, uh, but he can't match the size and the strength oh, of yeah. Sula. So I, I think that's going to be one of our key matchups out front. 
uh, is is are, are we going to be able to because uh, Braden Fugit is is looking well. He's uh, got He's a, still better. got a brace. Uh, first both games were before his high ankle sprain, so we'll see what we get out of him. He scored scored well in both of the games, uh, 14 in the first one, 11 in the second one. But again, that was before the high ankle sprain, and we'll see what our starters look like uh, here in just a few yeah, months. I, I talked to Coach Cooper uh, this week at Gary County High School, and he, he's been saying that you know Braden uh, continues to heal and he's moving better than, than he's uh, been moving since uh, he suffered that high ankle sprain. So uh, you know that that's a big key for uh, this Gary County uh, Gold Line basketball team here. And, and and I think you said it right. You know, Bull County doesn't have a defender that can match Mason's uh, that, that can match Mason's strength on the block. You know, one of the big uh, obstacles or the barriers that occurred during the first matchup between these two teams was Mason picked up three fouls on one possession. Right. And that just completely changed the complexion of the game. None in the first half right. and picked up three on the first possession of the second half. Um, and and I, I, they had, I believe there were two offensive rebounds oh, yeah. are what led to them maintaining possession. Uh, but let's take a real quick break again, our final break, uh, hear from our sponsors that we appreciate so much, and then we'll be back with you with game action here on the Golden Line Sports Network. of Garrett County Basketball. Shop Bob Allen for a winning selection of new and pre-owned vehicles, all dealmaker priced. Click and save today at BobAllenMotorMall.com. At Central Kentucky Federal Savings Bank, we understand the meaning of commitment, hard work, and extra effort. Just like our Golden and Lady Lion teams, we're proud to be part of the tradition that makes our community special. Central Kentucky Federal Savings Bank, your hometown friends, your hometown bank. Garrett County is our special place. And that's why Hunt Insurance Agency is proud to serve the insurance needs of local businesses, families, and individuals. We build relationships that last because getting to know you and your personal needs is what we do best. Hunt Insurance Agency. Since 1951, Danville Office Equipment has dedicated itself to providing personal service and superior office products for our customers. We take a lot of pride in their success because that's how we measure ours. Danville Office Equipment, Danville, Lebanon, and Somerset. Yoda of Somerset, we've been blessed to serve our community and blessed to be able to support the local schools and their sports. Friendly service from people you know. That's Sutton Pharmacy. We offer prescription management, preventative vaccinations, even local delivery. Just a few of the ways we work to keep our hometown healthy. Caring for a community, one patient at a time. That's Sutton Pharmacy. We are your friends and neighbors. We live, work, and play here. We offer modern banking. With personal service, you've come to know. We are Whitaker Bank. We are GC. At Toyota of Somerset, we've been blessed to serve our community and blessed to be able to support the local schools and their sports programs. It's just our way of saying thanks. At Toyota of Somerset, we're all about you. Hey, I'm Maria Montgomery, and you're watching Main Street Media TV. Welcome back to Lincoln County High School. We're doing our starting lineups are being announced. Garrett has been announced and getting ready to hear from Boyle County. Uh, starting for Garrett tonight, Ethan Cooper, Braden Fugit, Mason Sula, Jaden No, Austin Adams. Starting for Boyle, Kaysen Myers, the senior, Montavian Quisenberry, sophomore, Jakey Tarter, the senior, Guy Turner, the eighth grader, and Avery Bodner, the junior. Went, uh, Caden. You got a few, but let's get caught up on a few shout outs. Lori McGee has checked in saying, let's go GC. Ashley Bolton saying, let's go boys, let's pick up a big win. India Harvey saying, let's go GC. And Daryl and Lisa Seabold saying, go GC. And our starting lineups are over. We will be ready to tip it up hey, here in just a moment. Let's get this thing off. 
Let's, let's, finish, go. Up, let's finish up a big long drought here tonight. That's right, that's right. Let's, let The end starts now. Here we go. Sola tipping against Tartar. And again, the, the atmosphere is just tremendous. Oh, Cheerleaders on both ends, bands in both corners. Link, a lot of Lincoln County people still hanging around to see who they're going to play. Wonder who they're going to cheer for. Uh, I would cheer for us. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I, I believe if so. I were them. I, they probably don't want to be seen cheering for anybody, but. <laughs> but uh, I'm not going to see who we were cheering for. I, I won't. I won't. Nice backdoor cut to Cooper. Nice oh, lay and good pass there from Austin Adams for the first start. two of the game. Great start for the Golden Lions. Quisenberry checked by Fugit. Here it comes out, looks like 1-3-1. One, 2-3, three, one. Three, maybe just a modified 2-3 matchup. In the middle, down Myers, the leading, or a second leading scorer, I'm sorry. He had been the leading scorer most of the game, but it was close with Quisenberry. Yeah. Quisenberry's only scored average seven against Garrett in the two games. Yeah, Garrett's done a pretty nice job of keeping uh, Quisenberry out of the lane. Myers for three, no good. Tip by No, picked up by Adams, and Ethan Cooper will bring the cross. You know, good job by Jake No going after that rebound. Kind of tipped it away from the Bull County player and allowed Garrett County to get possession of that ball. Born straight man. No comes around looking. Fugit for three, no good. Tip by Sula, retrieved by Bodner. That's a good look, though, for Garrett County. Right, right. Quisenberry driving in behind. Sula takes it at him, gets the foul and run. Yeah, I'm not sure where the foul was. Well, and, and the problem with that one is you get a, uh, you know, it's just a cheapie. Yeah. You know, it's just a cheapie, and and, it, and it's almost inattention. Quisenberry yeah. just kind of forced the issue more than was expected by Garrett, and that will put Quisenberry at the line. So he shoots 59% on the year, and first one rolls in. So Sula's got to understand, you know, he's picked up a kind of a, a quick one. Let's not, let's not get in foul trouble here tonight. Right. Boyle comes with pressure off the make. No to Fugit. Seems to be moving as well as he's three for Fugit. No good. And chases it down, but it's out of bounds before he can make the play. Boyle's kind of content to let it go out. Uh, Fugit's moving as well as he's – I've seen him move yeah. since the since yeah. the high ankle sprain. Yeah, he, look, he looks like his, his ankle really had bothered him here tonight, Jeff. Becky Kincaid is saying she's watching from Atlanta, cheering for the Lions. There we go. The Beta Kincaid, we're cheering for the Lions tonight too. <laughs> Turner to Quisenberry. Work, content to working around, looking to Tartar. They go to the wing to Myers, and that's a three. No, excuse me, Guy Turner, eighth grader for three, makes it 6 2, Boyle, 6 13 to go in the first quarter. Yeah, I tell you, Turner has had some really nice games for Bull County versus Garrett County. Cooper with a long three, no good. Corner again, oh, 24. 9-2. That's another two by Guy Turner, and Garrett's going to get a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it here. A little well, bit of we, confusion. You know, we talk, now, now this is one of the keys to the game is what team can come out and play under emotions, right? Uh, you know, we saw Garrett County run some good offense, work to get a, a really nice shot at the rim by Cooper uh, on the first possession. Uh, the last three possessions, Garrett County's thrown up a three-point shot. Right, uh, right. And I know the three-point is a, a big weapon for Garrett County, but kind of threw up three kind of quick three-point shots right there. I'd like to see a little bit more patience on the offensive end and kind of work uh, to at least get a shot in the flow of the offense. First two games against Boyle. The first game, Garrett shot 29 threes. The second game, they shot 21. So that, uh, and, and I'll be honest, I didn't compare those numbers against some of the other games we did, but just kind of doing a deep dive into this. So that, that seems to be a strategy that Garrett has played to a certain extent the first two. But we're 0 for 3 at this point on threes, 1 for 1 on twos uh, at this point in the game. Pressure there, no, takes it in the middle, lost it over to Cooper, who saves it out in the corner to Fugit for two. Nice step Boy, in there by Braden, needed that one. That was huge. 9-4, 5.45 to go in the first quarter. Well, I, I like seeing Braden shooting the ball with confidence. He's a big-time weapon for the Gary County Gold Lions. Turner to Quisenberry, Bodner, and then they go in the middle. Short shot there by number five, Myers. Cooper takes it in and gets foul called. On number five, I believe, is where he pointed. Yeah. Casey Myers, that'll be his first team first. Yeah, I, I love seeing Cooper kind of drive the ball there. The big Sutton Pharmacy uh, spotlight to Ethan Cooper coming into this matchup with 1,681 points for the Gold Lions. Oh, Sula takes it up, no call. Loose ball picked up by Bodner, and Adams fouled him. That'll be first on Austin, team second. 
almost a frustration yeah, foul. Kind of silly that far away from the basket, but nine for Boyle, 5.18 to go in the first quarter. And Guy Turner brings it across. Run Turner down in the corner. No, he's got to go there, which makes it difficult covering Quisenberry. He drives into the basket. Tell you what, Quisenberry, when he gets in the paint, he's hard to guard. Right, right. And when you've got their, uh, Demarion Boatley set to come in for Garrett at the next dead ball, the when you're running that corner, you, that's why you're putting Turner in that corner, having made two threes already. Try to go down low, late, late pass there, and Tartar picks it off. Gets it to Myers. I like the fault. I like getting Mason the ball down low. Quisenberry with the fake into the lane. And that's another two for Quisenberry. 13 for Boyle. He's got, Quisenberry's got seven points here. You know, halfway through the first quarter, you know, Boyle County already has 13 points. Right, right. Cooper for three over Bodner. Knocks it in. Big DOE time. three. Oh, big time DOE three. Needed it. Needed it. Six point lead for Boyle. Turner to Quisenberry, goes down the corner to Bodner, drives in on reverse layup, no good, but J.D. Tarter with the tip in. He's really active on the offensive glass. And that's a, one of the issues you ran into with the 2-3 zone is, is matching up, yes. especially when you have a dynamic of rebounder. And Sula, again, for all the things we talked about, uh, Mason comes in averaging 7.7. Uh, Tarter's averaging almost twice as many rebounds as Sula. Three-pointer there by Cooper is no good. Randy Grubbs has checked in saying, let's go, Lions. Boatley comes in for Fugit, and you know, I think Boatley's going to match Quisenberry. Yeah, I, I think that's a good defensive uh, uh, kind of uh, switch up there by Coach Cooper. Uh, you know, it's still early in this game. It kind of feels like a big possession. The goal lines really don't need to get down by double digits. Myers back to Quisenberry for two. Back shot's good. Six for Quisenberry. He's got two, four, six, eight, nine. Nine for yes. Quisenberry. Already more than he scored in either of the other two games. Boatley takes it up and gets fouled by number 24, Guy Turner. That'll be his second, or first, excuse me, his first team second. Boatley will step the line where he shot 50% on the year on 44 attempts. Again, though, I, li I, like, I like the cut to the basket. I like the good look right there. Uh, you know, Boatley doing a great job of kind of catching that, going straight up with the shot. Nice make there. 17-8, Boyle, 314 to go. Number 34, Maddox Hager, another eighth grader steps in. Number 11, Dalton Stone. And they replace Bodner and Turner. You know, it just kind of feels like Gary County just needs to, you know, just kind of needs to settle down and, and not let Bull County extend this lead. Uh, Bull County has come out on fire on the offensive end. Nice two free throws made there by uh, Demarion Boatley. He falls back now into a 2-3. First time he kind of almost looked like a boxing chaser the way yeah. he was coming out on the ball, but now they're settling back into more traditional 2-3. Especially with Turner out, I think, you know, kind of invite Bull to shoot some threes. Quisenberry no good again. A rebound by Tarter. Back to Quisenberry into the lane. Out on the wing to Stone. And then he comes across to Myers. Tarter running the, running the baseline, trying to hit that soft middle. Nice pass down low to Hager. Up, no good tip. Sula tips it. Ball loose. Cooper comes up with it. In the front court, three on one. Behind the back pass to Austin Adams. Nice. 17-11. Nice assist there by Cooper. Yeah, but, you know, let's see if, you know, good defensive possession, great dish by Cooper. Let's see if that picks up some energy for the goal lines. It's one of those plays you better make it, especially <laughs> when right. your dad's the coach. You better <laughs> make that. You better make, make the pass and get the two out of it. Tartar, nice high-low pass to Hager. No good. Oh, and they got a late. The gent referee underneath did not call it. It's the guy on the wing, and that's going to be two on Sula. Yeah, that's a I, – I think they called that on Austin Adams. Austin Adams. Yeah, Adams. I'm sorry, his, his second, though. Yeah, okay. yeah. And yeah, number not, not 34, sure Maddox Hager steps the line, shoots 53%, only 17 attempts coming into the game. Uh, Maddox is an eighth grader, scored 10 points in the first game and did not play. I assume hurt because of it looks like he gets good clock most of the games he plays. So may have had some type of injury in our second game. 17-11, 2-16 to go in the first quarter. Hager steps the line for the second. Misses it short, but Stone 
Cooper saying he got pushed in. You just got you can you can push back from where he is a lot more than you can push from the other angle. Uh, missed shot there. Tartar with get the, the rebound. rebound. Got to limit possessions. Rosenberry drives around the corner. Ian Alcorn enters the game for Garrett, replacing Austin Adams, who picked up his second. Alcorn checking Quisenberry. Short corner, and he got – I think that was on Boltley. Alcorn was gardening, and I don't believe Ian got close enough to him. Yeah, somebody. Yeah, yeah Newton, somebody. but uh, Demarion came from the side and fouled it. Yeah, I, I think Boltley was just hustling over there and kind of ended up making contact with Quisenberry. Folks, Quisenberry's come out. He's got 11 points. He has tied gear County with point total so far. And now it leads him. 20 to 11, minute 50 to go in the first quarter. You know, Garrett, Garrett's got to have some stops. I mean, you know, Bull County's on pace to, to score right at 100 points here tonight. Yeah, That's yeah. a lot in high school basketball. And that thought it was a kickball, but it's just going to be out of bounds off of Lincoln. I think that was off of Stone. Jimmy Preston has checked in saying, let's go, Garrett. No to Cooper. And Cooper will bring it across. Boyle now with a 1-3-1 to go short corner to Alcorn. Cooper long three, short, rebound no. Back to Alcorn, he head fakes into the lane. Back to Cooper for three, no good. Out and rebound pulled off by Stone. Couple good looks there for Gary County, just didn't uh, knock either one of them down. Myers over to Quisenberry, Boltley in again to check Quisenberry. Try to match that athleticism down on the corner to Tartar, short corner. Quisenberry for three. No good. Rebound Cooper. Great rebound, Ethan Cooper. No, try the no look to no, and number five, Myers tips it away. 49.2 seconds to go in the first quarter. You know, again, I don't think Bull County could have played this first quarter, you know, much better uh, offensively uh, than what Bull County has had. You know, Gary County, you know, uh, you know, down nine points. Love to see Gary County get a basket, maybe stop in a basket and kind of cut this lead to five or six uh, going into the second quarter. Turner and Bodner re-enter for Garrett. Fugit come, spells no. I'm sorry. Uh, Fugit for Garrett, obviously. Uh, Bodner and Turner for Boyle. Quisenberry sits. And Tartar sits. 47 seconds to go. Garrett brings the cross. So he fakes the handoff. Matched by, again, eight, nice size eighth grader, number 34 there. Nice pass there down low. Go. There we go. Straight to the front of the rim. Great nice. pass by Ethan Cooper. Great catch by Sula putting it in the basket. And again, with Tartar not in, uh, you know, that may oh, be yeah. a time to try to try to take advantage and make that a factor in the game. Stone. Go low to Myers. Got pushed. No call. Turner back to Stone. And he walked. Good job. Right. Good job challenging that by Boatley and Alcorn. Well, let's get a basket here, and that's exactly what the doctor over for Garrett County. Going into the second quarter here, only down maybe, you know, five or six points. 12 seconds to go in the first quarter. Cooper brings it across. Takes it in the lane, fall away. Oh. Nice, mate. And long heave by Boyle is no good. End of the first quarter, Urban Group scoreboard shows Boyle County 20, Garrett 15. We're going to take a quick listen from our sponsors and much appreciation to them, and then we'll be back with you here on the Golden Line Sports Network. New and pre-owned vehicles, all dealmaker priced. Click and save today at BobAllenMotorMall.com. At Central Kentucky Federal Savings Bank, we understand the meaning of commitment, hard work, and extra effort. Just like our Golden and Lady Lion teams, we're proud to be part of the tradition that makes our community special. Central Kentucky Federal Savings Bank, your hometown friends, your hometown bank. Garrett County is our special place. And that's why Hunt Insurance Agency is proud to serve the insurance needs of local businesses, families, and individuals. We build relationships that last because getting to know you and your personal needs is what we do best. Hunt Insurance Agency. Since 1951, Danville Office Equipment has dedicated itself to providing personal service and superior office products for our customers. We take a lot of pride in their success because that's how we measure ours. Danville Office Equipment, Danville, Lebanon, and Somerset.
Garrett returns Boatley, Fugit, Alcorn, Sula, and Cooper. Boyle answers with Quisenberry, Myers, Tartar, Bodner, and Turner. That's original starting five for Boyle. Long three, no good. Looked like Fugit was being held by Turner, but no call. Cooper into the lane, nice two. You know, for, for Boyle County in the first quarter there, Jeff, it's kind of one-man show. Montave and Quisenberry had 12 of the 20 points. Tartar had two points, and Turner had six. Bodner, not much of a threat on the three. Drives in, Myers takes it up and loses it off his oh, leg. Garrett Ball. Good deal. For Garrett County in the first quarter, uh, Cooper had seven, Adams had two, Boatley had two, uh, Fugit had two, and Mason Sula had two. Garrett, uh, Boyle coming with some pressure. Garrett on a little 6-0 run here, 7.23 to go in the half. Willie Hoskins has checked in saying, let's go Lions. Fugit goes to Boatley, out on the wing to Cooper. And down no look, oh, nice to Sula for the easy lay-in. That's how you shoot 70% oh, from the yeah. field if you can get those with nobody in front of you. you know, great look by Ethan Cooper. Good, Gary Kenny doing a good job of uh, beating that pressure. Myers shoots the three, or excuse me, the long two, and that stops Garrett's run at eight. Makes it 22-19, seven minutes to go in the first half. That's the first two points of the night for Casey Myers. If you get looks. Checked by Quisenberry. Boyle in man now. Cooper for three. Feeling it, feeling it. D-O-E-3. Ties it up with 6.39 to go. Well, you know, good offense by Gary County running Cooper off some screens. Cooper doing a good job of catching it, going straight up for a good shot. A lot of times a good shot starts with a good pass. Garrett switches to man there in that, in that position, and Myers with a nice shot there over Sula. Hard for Sula to close out on yes. that with uh, with already having one foul. Cooper into the lane, wrap around to Sula, out of bounds, stays Garrett Ball, 6-17 to go in the half. Again, good luck by Ethan Cooper, uh, driving up to the basket and kind of bringing Mason Sula towards the basket. You know, good fault trying to get the big man the ball right by the basket. Up high to Fugit, Tartar chases. Cooper for three. Ooh, good look. And rimmed off to Tartar. Quisenberry in the lane for two. 14 points on the night already for Montavia Quisenberry. 26-22, Urban Group scoreboard, 5.56 to go in the half. Selena Willoughby's checked in saying, let's go, GC. Keep her over to Sula. Not much of a threat to drive. Goes to Boatley, down low to Sula, being held. Blocked, but Fugit comes up with it, one-handed pass. Well, and, and that was my problem, Jeff. That Three-point goal by D-O-E-3. Nice shot there by Ethan Cooper, 26-25, Garrett, 5-24 to go. Quisenberry in the lane, and we're going to get a foul out on the floor. Well, you know, so that's my problem, right? I mean, you know, Mason Fugit. Sula's a big, strong kid. And, and got clobbered a couple of times down on the block, yeah. and you don't call a foul. And then that. You know, well, and, the, and then Mason Sula's first foul, Quisenberry drop, dri, dri, dribbles in and makes contact with Mason's hip, and it's called a foul. Well, you know, the, the, the clobbering is a foul. You know, touching Sula's hip is not a foul. Yeah, yeah. You know, but sometimes that gets backwards. Number 22, Brent Christopher, a senior, or excuse me, a junior, enters for Boyle out on the wing. I tell you, Gary County, you know, kudos to Gary County doing a great job of fighting right back in this game. Now that Boyle taking advantage of what Garrett's getting with that one through run going short corner, long pass up to Boatley. He saves it back into Sula. Come I think on that across. was exactly his plan. Yeah. <laughs> Just got the ball to him a little deep there, not <laughs> able to do much with it. But not a good necessarily job. good for the heart, right? So, so throw it to the big guys, what you say. He's, Cooper drives the lane. No <laughs> call there again, and it's not happening on that end, but Garrett. Goes up 27-26. 17 points on the night uh, for Ethan Cooper, putting on a show here on the offensive end. 24 for three, another three there by Turner. Yeah, three, you you, three you, threes for him? Yeah, three threes. You definitely don't want to give him an open look right there. Jay No doing a great job of closing out. Turner doing a good job with that ball fake. Cooper answers with a three. My goodness. 30-29. The only Man, thing a, hotter than me in this gym might be Ethan Cooper. <laughs> that's right. That's right. It's a Wild West shootout right now. Tartar turns down the long he two won't. and drug his feet. Good defense there by Garrett reacting. Made Tartar do something. He just drugged that foot. 
Kenny Bradley Sr. has checked in saying, let's go, GC, let's go, Fugit. Gary, or I thought Boyle might come with some three-quarters pressure. They're going to wait till half court, trying to set that trap right as he comes across. No. Over to Alcorn. Back to Cooper. Boyle extending that pressure, trying to go short corner. Good catch by Boatley. No into the lane. Good way to work the ball. Cooper for three. My Boom. goodness. 33-29, Garrett. 344 wow. to go in the half. My goodness, folks. I might have to get my calculator out. <laughs> Quisenberry over to Turner. And no, putting some pressure. Challenging. Takes it into Sula. No good. And Tartar with the tipping. In. Somebody got to get a body. And timeout Boyle. Let's see what we're going to be. It's going to be a full timeout, so we're going to take a break and hear from our sponsors. Urban Group scoreboard shows Garrett 33, Boyle 31, 3.30 to go in the half on the Urban Group scoreboard, and we'll be back to you in just a minute on the Golden Line Sports Network. Somerset, we've been blessed to serve our community and blessed to be able to support the local schools and their sports programs. It's just our way of saying thanks. At Toyota of Somerset, we're all about you. Hey, I'm Maria Montgomery, and you're watching Main Street Media TV. All right, welcome back, everybody. I apologize. We're having technical difficulties with our audio tonight, but you're probably mostly interested in the game, and I'll get you back to the guys. Go ahead. <laughs> back here, Garrett, 320 to go in the first half. Garrett up by two, 33-31. Jaden oh, Oates, nice oh, oh, with the left hand. Nice play there by Jaden Oates, taking advantage of what's given. My goodness. Alcorn, Cooper, no. Sula and Boatley, three out of the side for Turner, no good. Oh, Tip by Tarter, saves it in off a of no. Just so, a heady play by Tarter. So, Gear Kenny High School is currently having some construction. Uh, today, the geothermal got hit, so we lost the air condition at the high school. So, our man Ben Davis has checked in. He's a teacher at Gear Kenny High School saying Cooper was hotter than GCHS today without air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> Basket there by Cason Myers, 35-33. Six, yeah, that's Myers, six point. Uh, six points already in the second quarter. 2.47 to go in the first half. Garrett's still up two on the Urban Group scoreboard. Cooper takes Myers, gets picked Whoa! up by Carter, no oh. good. And and Boatley with a nice <laughs> rebound putback. So, thought Sula had it, got it tipped away from him, and Boatley with the putback. I think I think Sula was just being a good teammate. And no good by Quisenberry, rebound Jaden, no. Boatley got chucked there on a screen by Jakey Tarter. Uh, but ended up doing all right. 219 to go in the first half as our halftime guest oh, enters around. So please stay man. with us. Who are we going to talk to at the half, Caleb? The man, the myth, the legend, Dave Hoskins. Mark Cooper for folks. three. He shot to it from the parking lot. 206 to go in the half. Garrett up seven now. 26 points on the night for Ethan Cooper. Putting on a show here at Lincoln County High School. Tartar drives on Sola. Surprised he didn't take that up, try to get the foul. Turner for a short two off short corner. He's got a nice shot. Plays under control, uh, keeps his shoulders square, feet square, does a real nice job there. You know, the worst thing is he's an eighth grader. Uh, no. We'll be watching him for years <laughs> to come. Terry Nose checked in saying, great job, Jay. Let's go, Garrett. Coach Cooper wants a timeout with 1.35 to go. He's got Fugit set to come in. He's going to take a 30, so we'll keep it here. Whew, I feel like I'm playing. Well, it, it's warm up here. <laughs> And I, I don't know if we've mentioned that to our listeners at home, but so, it is. So we, we got the man in charge of Garrett County Athletics joining us at halftime. He doesn't know yet he's going to get a warm headset. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, – uh, and we, we – I think know it was we, football season. Well, he's an old football coach, football That's player, right. football coach. These Bell County guys, they, they don't bother me. Oh, no, you know? no. There you go. Uh, they don't complain near as much as I do. That's I know right. that's for sure. Just like eating at Leon's on a nice, warm summer night, right? <laughs> oh, boy. 
135 to go in the half. Garrett 40, Boyle 35. And again, the, the score of the first two games between these teams, 64, 63, 60, 57. Uh, it looks like we might exceed that tonight. Oh, yeah, I think so. I think so. Bodner checking Fugit. Turner checking Boatley deep. Go back in the backcourt to, to Fugit. And he'll bring it across. Boiling man. Fugit had sat for a little while, has just re entered. Boatley to Cooper. Cooper out in the wing to Fugit. Checked by Quisenberry. A lot of hands. Lot, two good friends there. Sula with the tip. Oh, almost to Cooper, but Quisenberry comes up with it. Racing up court. Sula needs to stay away. And no foul called. Loose ball. Quisenberry comes back up with it. Thought we had a chance. Trapped there by, and then we call a foul. Man, that was active there. That the was, offense and the, defensive that was, ends, wasn't it? Yeah. A whole lot foul of ball. That's on Jaden No. His first, so that helps a little. Austin Adams with two, Fugit, Sula, No, and Boatley with one. 105 to go in the first half. Rebecca Logis checked in saying, let's go GC. Myers for three, no good. And Cooper oh, trying to out the box out Tartar. That's a man And Sula rebound. went and got it for him. 40-30 go to Boatley to Fugit, 52 seconds to go in the half. My, my future son-in-law has checked in saying, let's go GC. My nickname now is Dr. Pops. Okay. You know. I, I, I looked down at this other one. I saw a different name. I was, <laughs> well, that's Fred. Fred has checked in, too. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. He has reminded us it is David Hoskins' birthday. <laughs> Folks, we might sing happy birthday to him. All right. Yeah. Cooper drives. Pump fake over Quisenberry. No good. Sula with the tip. And no Carter, foul. surprisingly enough, rebounds it. 25 seconds to go in the half. Boatley checking Quisenberry, and that will be a second on Demarion. And that will be 17 yeah. fouls. Put Monte, or excuse me, put uh, Montavian at the line, shooting two. So you're right, Fred. It is David Hoskins' birthday. That's why we're having him on. I mean, you know, it's your birthday. We put you on at halftime. That's the way it works. Yep. That's the way it works. If it's during the district tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Quisenberry again uh, coming into tonight's game, shooting 59%, misses the front end, but it's tipped out, and Quisenberry saves it back in off of Fugit. That's, That's the second nice. time we've had a save in like that. Yeah, a really nice athletic move by Quisenberry. Great job of Fugit going over there and hustling, uh, trying to get that rebound. 21 so, seconds to go in the half. Folks, both these teams are kind of giving it all they have on the court here in this first half. Quisenberry over. Woo! Got a guard that kid. Guy Turner. He had a really good game in our second game That's over four at Brees. Four 12 points for him. Cooper, six seconds to go to Boatley. Boatley goes to Fugit. Fugit's going to have to shoot this one. Throws in the corner to no for three. No good. Irving Green scoreboard shows Boyle, Gary County 40, Boyle County 38. Uh, as we've reached the half of this district semifinal, we're going to take a, another a moment to visit with our sponsors, and then we'll be back with the Gary County Athletic Director, David Hoskins, here on the Golden Line Sports Network. At Central Kentucky Federal Savings Bank, we understand the meaning of commitment, hard work, and extra effort. Just like our Golden and Lady Lion teams, we're proud to be part of the tradition that makes our community special. Central Kentucky Federal Savings Bank, your hometown friends, your hometown bank. Garrett County is our special place. And that's why Hunt Insurance Agency is proud to serve the insurance needs of local businesses, families, and individuals. We build relationships that last because getting to know you and your personal needs is what we do best. Hunt Insurance Agency. Since 1951, Danville Office Equipment has dedicated itself to providing personal service and superior office products for our customers. We take a lot of pride in their success because that's how we measure ours. Danville Office Equipment. Danville, Lebanon, and Somerset. Been 
to vaccinations, even local delivery. Just a few of the ways we work to keep our hometown healthy. Caring for a community, one patient at a time. That's Sutton Pharmacy. We are your friends and neighbors. We live, work, and play here. We offer modern banking. With personal service, you've come to know. We are Whitaker Bank. We are GC. At Toyota of Somerset, we've been blessed to serve our community and blessed to be able to support the local schools and their sports programs. It's just our way of saying thanks. At Toyota of Somerset, we're all about you. Hey, I'm Maria Montgomery and you're watching Main Street Media TV. Welcome back to the Gold Line Sports Network, live here tonight in the 45th District Semifinals here at Lincoln County High School. Your Urban Group scoreboard has the good guys, Garrett County 40, Bull County 38, uh, and we're, we're honored on the Central Kentucky Federal Savings Bank Halftime Report to have the head honcho, Dave Hoskins, to join us here at Halftime. No head honcho, oh. just do what I can. <laughs> Well, David Hoskins is the athletic director for Garrett County, uh, uh, currently serves as athletic director for the high school uh, and the middle school. Uh, and, and everybody that knows Dave just talks about, you know, how, how a man of integrity, uh, such a hard worker, uh, committed to it. And the, the job of an athletic, or athletic director is pretty tough. I think there's a lot more to it than people realize. <laughs> <laughs> well, with, with, with all that being said, one of the things we've talked about, uh, you know, throughout this whole entire home season, uh, for Garrett County is the hardships uh, that got that got generated in December with uh, you know Garrett County having some water damage to the court. Uh, the 45th district tournament was scheduled to be hosted at Garrett County High School. So so coach kind of walk us through kind of getting that phone call about what's happened and kind of some of the things behind the scenes while well, we went into play. Christmas Day about two o'clock Mr. Stoll sent me a message and some pictures. He said, I know this is not what you want to see on your Christmas day, but but he sent the pictures. You know, our maintenance team was up there that day for six or seven hours just getting water off the floor. They did an amazing job. We went back on Thursday and had Mr. Martin from Martin Flooring come in. He looked at the court. We, we told him, we said, this is our day, February 20th. Can we have the floor done? And he told us no. He said, <laughs> he said March 1. So from that day, I called Brad Petrie at Lincoln. Lincoln was supposed to host next year. I called Brad. I said, is there any way we can flip? And then we called CJ Lynn, Travis McHugh at Boyle and Danville and just let everybody know what was going on. And, you know, as much as we want to beat each other out here, oh, yeah. We work together really well. Yeah, and, and I, I was on WPBK FM, uh, one of the morning shows with Tim Estes. You know, Tim being a former athletic director, uh, and I do want folks to know this, I want our viewers to know this. You know, the athletic directors, you know what, you, 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 it's a big family. It is. Uh, and when we're competing with one another with our district schools, yes, we want to compete at a high level, we want to win. But the, but the athletic director fraternity is a tight bunch, and there is a lot of conversation amongst the, the athletic directors. There is, you know, five years ago when I started, Tim Estes and I were the new guys in the crowd. Lisa Fisher and Kyle Wynn just took us under their wing. And, you know, here we are five years later, and I'm the old guy now. <laughs> You're the veteran. So, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> so they've kind of talked us through, uh, you know, the, the you know the girls' basketball uh, season came to an end uh, over here, I guess, on Monday night. Uh, the boys competing uh, here tonight, uh, you know, competing hard against Bull County. You know the basketball season from an athletic director standpoint. Uh, it's it, it, you know it's a lot of fun seeing these kids compete on the court. Coaches working hard, being committed, uh, the, 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 the putting our kids in most successful positions they possibly can. They did. You know I think Evan, Scott Boland, uh, you know Justin Kearney, that entire staff, Sis and Maddie, Elijah. They worked their tails off with our girls, and our girls had fun this year. Oh, they sure did. You know, they didn't have the record that any of them wanted, but they never laid down. I mean, they fought every game. Yeah, so. and, and I tell you, Dave, I, I'm an old football coach. I don't get touchy and feel easy. But honestly, when you when you were saying that, I got coach chills. 
Because that's a life lesson. It right? is. It, it is. is. Sometimes things don't go your way. A lot of times you got to overcome adversity. you got to uh, practice perseverance and persistence. And that's exactly what our girls did throughout they the did. season. They did. And, you know, they didn't have a senior on the team. Very young. I think they started a seventh grader most of the season. Their future's bright. Yes, they, so, it sure is. And it's fun watching our boys here tonight competing at a high level with Bull County here in this first half. Have you ever seen a district tournament with five teams so even? Them, them. You know, Danville went to overtime with DCA Monday night, took Lincoln to overtime here tonight. This game's a battle. I mean, it, this is just these five, five of the six teams in this district, I think, two or three points either way you've got a different winner yeah and it's been like that all it's been like that all season you know we talked about garrett county has not advanced to the region since 2005 uh tr- you know 16 minutes of basketball away uh from hopefully kind of breaking that uh, drought here tonight what would that mean for this basketball program oh i think it would you know to me i love these kids that are out Absolutely. here i mean they have battled through the COVID years low attendance and now they're out here you know They've played a half a season or more on neutral sides or other teams' home courts. If these guys can pull this off, I mean, I think we all, you know, need to be patting these guys and Coach Cooper on the back. So it'd be a, it'd be a fun night. It'll be a fun night celebrating going back to Lancaster. Happy birthday! Well, thank you. Yeah, now the Jeff big Jenkins. six zero today. Now Jeff talked about maybe singing happy birthday. <laughs> That's, that's what I was expecting. You yes. said 60 years old. 60 years old. Ooh, I today. hope I look as a good at 60. <laughs> I don't look that good at 47. <laughs> so, Dave, we appreciate all that you do. I know I'm biased, but I say this. I feel like we got the best athletic director in the state of Kentucky. Uh, bless uh, everything that you do for our student athletes. Uh, bless to call you a friend and just appreciate all that you do. Hey, I appreciate everything you guys do working with you and Mr. Stoll and our board. This is a dream job. Uh, so. We're blessed. Yeah, no doubt about that. We're blessed. Folks, with that, we're going to take one last break. We're going to be back with second half action live on the Goat Line Sports Network. Bob Allen, for a winning selection of new and pre owned vehicles, all dealmaker price. Click and save today at BobAllenMotorMall.com. At Central Kentucky Federal Savings Bank, we understand the meaning of commitment, hard work, and extra effort. Just like our Golden and Lady Lion teams, we're proud to be part of the tradition that makes our community special. Central Kentucky Federal Savings Bank, your hometown friends, your hometown bank. Garrett County is our special place. And that's why Hunt Insurance Agency is proud to serve the insurance needs of local businesses, families, and individuals. We build relationships that last because getting to know you and your personal needs is what we do best. Hunt Insurance Agency. Since 1951, Danville Office Equipment has dedicated itself to providing personal service and superior office products for our customers. We take a lot of pride in their success because that's how we measure ours. Danville Office Equipment. Danville, Lebanon, and Somerset. even local delivery. Just a few of the ways we work to keep our hometown healthy. Caring for our community, one patient at a time. That's Sutton Pharmacy. We are your friends and neighbors. We live, work, and play here. We offer modern banking. With personal service, you've come to know. We are Whitaker Bank. We are GC. At Toyota of Somerset, we've been blessed to serve our community and blessed to be able to support the local schools and their sports programs. It's just our way of saying thanks. At Toyota of Somerset, we're all about you. Hey, I'm Maria Montgomery and you're watching Main Street Media TV. Welcome back to Lincoln County. Garrett got the ball to start the second half. Scott went down low to Sula. Boyle goes down low to Tartar. Uh, Garrett goes back down low to Sula again to score. So the <laughs> Urban Group scoreboard shows Garrett 44, Boyle 40. Six points haven't been scored so far this quarter. Nice tip by Fugit, but Quisenberry tracks it down, kind of. You know, girl, I, I love getting Mason Sula the ball that low. I mean, it, it, it's almost impossible. That 
Quisenberry is hurt. I think they need to leave him. Yeah, yeah make sure he's all right for you. Tough kid. That foul was called on Sula, his second. And I'll be honest, I was looking at Quisenberry. I didn't see the foul. Uh, Quis- but Sula fouled Tartar. Greg Carey has checked in saying, let's go, Garrett. Jen Payne, go GC. Also cheering for Tavy. I went over to before uh, before the game and kind of shook Tavy's hand. Told him I was proud of him. Uh, just a great young man. Uh, 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 wish him nothing but the best. Tartar steps to the line shooting two on the foul on the free throw. Tartar shoots 61% on se- 61% on 75 attempts coming into the night. So in that second quarter, Garrett outscored Bull County 25 to 18. Good turnaround. And Tartar misses. Sula goes up and claims it. And then Cooper will bring it across. Three-point lead, six and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Kenny Bradley Sr. gave us an update. The Lewis County Lions just beat Greenham County in district play. All right, we need two Let's line victories. Let's go, GC. Let's get the Lions to pick up a win. That's the other right. Lions. Detroit Lions can win if they want to. I'm, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm for all Lions. And out of bounds off of no back to Boyle County ball. 6.15 to go in the third quarter, 45-41. So 44-41. The half, so the halftime leaders, Tartar with four, Quisenberry with 14, Myers with six, and Turner 14 for Bull County. Cooper with 26, No with two, Adams with two, Boatley with four, Fugit with two, and Sula with four at half for Garrett County. Nice pick off there. Good anticipation by Austin Adams. Takes it to the rim, and no call, and that's going to be out of bounds back to good. I think that was just one of those that – we're going to give it back to Garrett. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, we'll I'm wondering. It. Garrett will take I'm it. I'm wondering. That's right. Something on the floor there, I think, from where Lincoln stormed the court in the first game. We just <laughs> now got that off. Cooper will inbounds underneath. Well, how many times, how many stoppages have we seen the two games to wipe sweat off the floor? Floor, yeah. Because yeah. I'm telling you, folks, it is a sauna here uh, at Lincoln County High School tonight. Cooper in the wing, guarded by Bodner. Tartar and Sula. Going head-to-head down low is nice. Three-pointer by Cooper, no good. Rebound to Quisenberry. And racing up the court. No tries to impede his flow, no good. And what's that going to be on? Uh, That would be three on Adams, 12. That's his third. Yeah, didn't really see that one. Uh, Saw Quisenberry go down, kind of throw the ball up in the air. uh, Unfortunately for Gary County, Austin Adams. Uh, got called for the foul. I don't think Austin necessarily agrees with it. Now, that's not going to change uh, the official's it's opinion. not going to change their mind for the most part. Hey, so the number one Gresham has checked in, saying, Jessica Gresham, let's go GC. Quisberry <laughs> misses the first and makes the second. Makes it a two-point game, 5.37 to go in the third quarter. That's 15 points on the night now for Quisenberry. Boyle with full court man. Fugit guarding, guarded by Quisenberry. Cooper comes off the screen, followed by Bodner. Adams looking to go. Sula just left, bringing ooh, cross court to Cooper. Fugit for three, be big. Oh, rimmed off. Out. Good rebound by Adams, takes it up. No good. Sula tips it, and Quisenberry comes up with it. Couple good looks there for Garrett County. Fugit stops Quisenberry, sends him into Cooper for two. Tie ball game on the Urban Group scoreboard. 4.57 to go in the third quarter. 17 points now for Montavia Quisenberry. For Garrett County, second quarter, Mason Sula so far has all four points for Garrett County. Boyle outscored 6-4 so far. A little over three minutes into this quarter. Nice cut to Cooper. Chased by two. Man, and there's the body. foul on Tartar. And oh, then, no, no, no. You better, yeah. yeah. I mean, good, good bit and of now you're going to let them stand there and talk? Yeah. You're going to let them do that after what yeah. just happened? Yeah. Somebody got to get, I mean, that's. Yeah. Cooler heads need to prevail. Yeah. Let's play some yeah. basketball. So I'll tell you this. I, did, I don't like how Tartar got in Cooper's face, but uh, there might have been a thrown basketball, too. Uh, that, that, I don't know. I'm not going to say the ball got thrown on purpose at one of the Bull County's and, players' and, legs. But and, and let me give let me give credit. Tartar went back over and, yes, and, sure and, and knocked knuckles like or it. whatever with, at, with Ethan Cooper. At the end of the day, you know, I like that. That was good officiating. You know, nobody lost her cool yeah. from a motion standpoint. Both Cooper and Tartar doing a good job uh, of being mature and kind of playing, you know, kind of shaking it off. Two seniors. Boatley replaces no. 
And screens and then cuts down. Going to go high to Sula. Uh, Tartar's chasing. Better grab it. And watch the cut. And he took it out of bounds. Not Almost a nice play there as Turner and Tartar just reacting. Oh, yeah. Garrett's got to bring it full court now. But Now, I'll tell you this. After something like that, I, I, I always say, you know, you do yourself a lot of good going to the basket because the whistle gets a, yeah. little, a little bit tighter. tighter. Yeah, yeah. Fugit out on the wing to Adams, guarded by Tartar. Goes around him, and there that'll be go. a foul. Is that, that'll be two. That's the second on Tartar, picking up two here in the last little bit, and that'll be underneath. Second you know, team foul. You know, good job by Austin Adams. Good call over there by Jim Tackett. Really good official. Uh, works with us on the wellness grant there by the Kentucky Department of Education. Nice shot there, fake by Adams and gets the put back. Puts Garrett back up 46-44, 4.15 to go in the third quarter. That's four points now tonight for Austin Adams. Garrett doing a better job of closing out on Guy Turner when he gets the ball on the wing. Pusenberry into the lane. Bodner drives, and that's going to be a foul on Boatley, I guess, would be his third. So, you know, really, you know, and Gary County has played Bull County now three times. Really, on the offense, Bull County, you know, Quisenberry does a great job of getting in the lane. It's deadly when he gets in the lane. Turner does a great job shooting points or shooting threes for Bull County. Uh, and then Tartar does a good job of kind of getting some offensive rebounds. If you can kind of limit those three things, uh, I like Gary Kenny's chances coming out with a big win tonight. Bodner makes the first. He shoots 67% on 34 attempts coming in the game. Makes them both. Ties it back up at 46 with four minutes even to go in the third quarter. That's Bodner's first two points on the night. Quisenberry again guarding Fugit. The, the taller Myers guarding Cooper. A lot of hands. And looking for five, almost a walk, and there is the walk. I, I almost think Fugit – May have almost torqued his ankle there, yeah. but looked like, as you said, a lot of hands yeah. going on. I mean, that, you know, that, after that, he picks the dribble up, you know, and again, you know, when you know, you know, again, Scott Bowling used to say this about Ball County when you're playing Ball County, and if those defenders are allowed to use their hands, man, they're hard to score against, yeah, uh, yeah. because they are a strong physical team. Uh, really like to see a hand check call right there to kind of get the defender's hands off of Fugit as he had the basketball. Myers to Tartar for 15 foot, knocks it down. Boyle retakes the lead, 48-46, with three and a half minutes to go. That's five in the points now with Tartar in the third quarter. Cooper into the lane, step back three, tough shot, and Adams with a wow. nice rebound, and what they call the no basket yeah. foul on the floor on Turner. Austin Adams came flying in for that rebound right there. Nice aggressive play. That'll be the th- uh, third foul on Turner. I think they just changed it to a second. Second, I'm sorry. A second on Turner, third team foul this half for Boyle. Garrett inbounds underneath. Cooper goes around Tartar, takes it into Bodner and gets the foul. That will be – and Bodner, I'm showing his first, but I'm – yeah, Bodner's first. They put the number up, and then they changed the, the, yeah. number, the player number and then the number of fouls, so – Ethan will step to the line, shoot 92% of the year on 204 attempts coming into tonight. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now. This is a veteran referee and crew uh, that Scott Bottoms has placed in uh, this this district semifinal game. There's a little talking right there after that foul. Again, Fischl doing a great job of going to both players saying that's enough. Uh, so if that's, if that's going to continue, they're going to stick somebody with a technical yeah, foul. Yeah. So it's going to have to be really important to be disciplined here for All both right. these teams. Ethan misses the first. Line for the second, knocks it down. That's Ethan's first point of the second half there. Good seeing him uh, see the ball go through the basket there. Quisenberry brings it across. 3.06 to go in the third quarter. Nice pass down low to Bodner. Working on Sula, doesn't want to take it up. Back out to Turner for three, no good. Tartar, Sula with a good reach. It was just outside of his reach. Just uh, nothing wrong there. It's just the way that happened. And Tartar pulls the rebound, puts Boyle up three. Cooper into the lane, 15-footer, rims off. Sula with the rebound. Attack, <laughs> uh, bodied by Tartar and no call. Myers takes it in the lane, and you're going to give him the and one on that oh after a dribble. Goodness. That's That's unfortunate it's getting, there. It's, now that, that's yeah. two different officials, right? 
uh, that's two different officials. But, yeah, I mean, Tartar, Tartar clubbed Mason Sula down on the block. Yeah, uh, which, bl- which surprisingly prevented him from getting oh, the yeah. rebound. Leads to a break for Boyle. Yeah. That's tough. Myers to the line, 52-47, 2.41 to go. Myers makes it, makes it a six-point game. And Boyle calls a timeout. It's going to be a full timeout. Let's take a moment again to hear from our wonderful sponsors, and then we'll be back with you live on the Golden Line Sports Network. Bob Allen is a proud sponsor of Garrett County Basketball. Shop Bob Allen for a winning selection of new and pre-owned vehicles, all dealmaker priced. Click and save today at BobAllenMotorMall.com. At Central Kentucky Federal Savings Bank, we understand the meaning of commitment, hard work, and extra effort. Just like our Golden and Lady Lion teams, we're proud to be part of the tradition that makes our community special. Central Kentucky Federal Savings Bank, your hometown friends, your hometown bank. Garrett County is our special place. And that's why Hunt Insurance Agency is proud to serve the insurance needs of local businesses, families, and individuals. We build relationships that last because getting to know you and your personal needs is what we do best. Hunt Insurance Agency. Since 1951, Danville Office Equipment has dedicated itself to providing personal service and superior office products for our customers. We take a lot of pride in their success because that's how we measure ours. Danville Office Equipment. Danville, Lebanon, and Somerset. Welcome back to the Gold Line Sports Network. Urban Group Scoreboard shows two minutes and 41 seconds to go in the third quarter. Boyle County leads Garrett 53-47. It is Boyle, uh, Garrett ball, bring it full court. Adams into Boatley, takes it up into Tartar. Nice job. Good, strong, confident take by the sophomore. Yeah, I love seeing that right there. That's six points on the night for Boatley. That's a big possession for Garrett County. Boyle County had outscored Garrett County 15-7 in this quarter. Quisenberry takes it to Boatley, rims off, Tartar again with the rebound. rebound Adams, and they called the foul on that. I tell you, Uh, Tartar. That's four on Adams. You know, I I really like watching this Tartar kid play, Jeff. I mean, the kid is just tough as nails. Uh, And he's so aggressive uh, on the offensive glass for Ball County. Ian Alcorn comes in for uh, Austin Adams with his fourth. Throw up top to Myers, and he has to throw it in. And Boatley with a nice steal, and there's a foul call That's on be his third. Guy Turner. That will be his third, team fifth. No, team yeah, team fifth. Garrett will inbounds on the side. Two sixteen to go in the third quarter. That ball, uh, and there's number eleven, Dalton Stone, coming back in for Boyle. That play, Myers didn't allow it to go into the backcourt. Touched it in the front, and then had to save it in yes. to keep the over and back. And Boatley with a heady play to cut that off. Cooper goes in the backcourt to get it again, guarded by Casey Myers. Myers got a little bit of height maybe and, and maybe a little weight on, on Cooper. He's done a good job uh, chasing him uh, here in the third quarter. Cooper spins, takes it to the leg. Nice layup. Good persistent play. Cuts it back to a two-point game, 53-51, 154 to go in the third quarter. 29 points on the night now for Ethan Cooper. Out in the corner to Myers for three, no good. Good rebound by Fugit. And gets it to Cooper. Nice little run here by Garrett. Cooper's step back three for the lead. Boom. <laughs> DOE three again. Makes it 54 53. A steal by Boatley. A steal by Boatley. Over to Cooper. Cooper's going to take it to the rack. Goes into Tartar. No good. Rebound Stone. Mm. I think Cooper is doing a good job of trying to attack the get Tried, that foul yeah, call. Yeah, and Quisenberry takes it to Fugit, and no, and now uh, we get no the foul, foul call from over here. What's what's Stone stepped over top of Alcorn, yeah. and we're going to run to that. Send, you need to put somebody on number 11 because he's the one that stepped <laughs> over. But we've got two referees on the side of the floor where the ball is, and the call comes from the other side. And that is on Sula, his third. I didn't like the call there, Jeff. I, I, I mean, it's I, just I, we've got a real it, good Quisenberry's view. Quisenberry's going to go in and throw the ball up in there. Yeah, and it, and you got to decide if you're going to fall for it or yeah, not. Yeah. So far, they've decided they are going to fall for yeah. it. But I didn't even think Sula was the closest one to him. We may try to watch oh, yeah. this replay. Um, yeah, that's what makes it saying. I didn't even make contact with him. Yeah, yeah. But, again, you're the big guy. So, yeah. somebody goes falling down, you assume it's the big guy. Yeah. Free throw goes in, ties it at 54, minutes 17 to go in the third quarter.
Rims off, Sula, and you're going to call another. I'm surprised you didn't call one on Sula there. Good steal by Fugit, takes it to Myers, and oh, good foul call, got yeah. the foul call. Good job by Brady Fugate. Too. Good job contesting that ball down low, keeping it, keep using his body in between and going up. Well, so, let, so let's be honest. I mean, let's just call it, call it what's happened here. You know, Bull County's got a few football players on their uh, basketball team, right? They've come out the third quarter playing football on a basketball court, right? Uh, right. And, and really have, have ratcheted up the physicality uh, in this quarter there. So I like Gary County matching some of that physicality here uh, late in the third quarter. Fugit comes into the game shooting 67 percent on 45 attempts. Minute 10 to go in the third quarter tie game. Fugit makes the first. Boyle sends Turner back, but Boatley, Fugit makes a second. Sends Turner long, but Boatley recognizes that that's a Garrett timeout, a full timeout. Uh, again, we'll take this opportunity to listen to, to hear from our sponsors, and we'll be back with you live on the Golden Lion Sports Network. Friendly service from people you know. That's Sutton Pharmacy. We offer prescription management, preventative vaccinations, even local delivery. Just a few of the ways we work to keep our hometown healthy. Caring for our community, one patient at a time. That's Sutton Pharmacy. We are your friends and neighbors. We live, work, and play here. We offer modern banking. With personal service, you come to know. We are good to back. Toyota of Somerset, we've been blessed to serve our community and blessed to be able to support the local schools and their sports programs. It's just our way of saying things. At Toyota of Somerset, we're all about you. Hey, I'm Maria Montgomery, and you're watching Welcome back to Lincoln County High School. Urban Group scoreboard shows one minute, 10 seconds to go in the third quarter. Garrett County leads 56-54. It will be, I believe, Lincoln or a Boyle County ball. If it's Lincoln County ball, we really got trouble. <laughs> well, and, let's hope it is Friday night, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And uh, Boyle will bring it full court. I'm just well, noticing the Garrett County student section and the all-inclusive nature. As we have a number oh, of Garrett man. County students, we have Wild Will Hopkins from our pregame oh, show, Wild a Will. middle schooler, and seated right behind him, Shelby Roy oh, Hopkins I think in the Garrett County tonight. student section. He's leading it tonight. Right? He, he may be, maybe. <laughs> Quisenberry brings it across from Boyle. Cooper, Fugit, Boatley, Sula, and Alcorn. Tartar for the shot, no good. Rebound, Cooper. Good rebound there, 56 seconds to go. Do you hold it for one here, Jeff? If you can. Yeah. I, you know, I, it's it's kind of one of those things. If, if you're not used to doing it, you may not be able to do it. It may not be a good decision. But we've got – we should have the guard play between Fugit and Cooper to be able to hand the ball, move around, and if there's – you know, just be patient. Cooper with the turnaround, rims out. Good box out there by Tartar, no surprisingly. Foul. And that's going to be – Yeah. And who got T? Yeah, that's bull catting. I mean, he's – 11 got teed yeah. for Dalton Stone. Yeah, yeah. They so I think him. He's been doing it all night. I, I think the foul was yeah. on – I don't know if the foul was on Alcorn or Boatley. Yeah. But we're going to try to watch as they step two, and we'll see what the call is yeah. here. He, I uh, mean, yeah. And the referee's doing a good job getting their heads together to see what it was. That would be would be a Boyle County shooting one and one on the foul in the back quarters. Yeah. That would be seventh team foul. Yeah, and then Gary's uh, going to get two so free throws in the ball. They're going to move them off to the side. 11 with the foul. And then the technical is on white 11. Yeah. So, I mean, so, again, I mean, you know, I, I, I told you all this about two minutes ago. These officials have told the players enough's enough. Uh, and so Sloan has caught a couple of times. Sloan has kind of gave a little extra push yeah. uh, and some contact to the Stone, players. Dalton yeah. Stone. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. I mean, you know, stepped over Ian Alcorn on the last position down here. So, now, uh, again, a veteran, a veteran officiating crew, uh, you know, that was going to – they were going to kind of be careful and mindful of that. Did they call the foul on, on 11, Braden Fugit? I think so. For Garrett? I, yeah. I thought it was Boatley and Alcorn uh, it down here. like it too. So, they might have called it off the ball. So, 11 is shooting the – uh, the one and one. Uh, Stone comes into the game 50% on only eight attempts. Uh, nice make there by him. That's his first points of the night. And misses the second. 
56-55, Gary, 35.3 seconds to go in the third quarter. And this will then go, Ethan Cooper will shoot the technical, and then it will be Garrett Ball, correct? Yeah, yeah. and, you know, Danny Webb is a class act, Bull County's head uh, basketball coach, does a great job for Bull County going over and kind of telling him, telling Dalton, hey, let's just play basketball. Uh, and so Dalton responded real well to that, and I'm sure we'll do that for the rest of the game. Cooper makes the first, 57-55, 35.3 seconds to go in the third quarter. Cooper makes both. 58-55. So at the end of the day, you know, Garrett hits two free throws, ball one, and Garrett gets, gets the, the ball. possession. So right, I think that's right. something that Garrett County would definitely take that. And I'm they're showing I, that 11 w- with that one foul on the board, I think that's on Stone. Yeah, I agree. So I'm not sure about the foul because it would be Fugit second, I believe. And Garrett's going to try to be content to run this down. He goes to Cooper. Quisenberry gardening now. They've been switching up some. Few get back 15 seconds. He waves Boatley off. Goes back to Cooper. Nine seconds. Double teamed. Out in the corner to Fugit. Be a big three. No good. Rebound. Alcorn needs to take it up. Drops it to Sula. Head fake. And the foul. Oh, got the foul call. Great, great rebound Good by job. Ian Alcorn. Great job finding Mason Sula uh, going up with a big shot for Gary County now, drawing the foul. Mason's going to have to shoot two with nobody on the line, so yep. it'll be like technical with the oh, clock yeah. running out. That foul was all number five, Cason Myers, his third, team eighth. So, Selena Willoughby asked what happened. Ended up being a technical foul on Ball County is what happened. Sula makes the first, 59-55. And makes the second. Wow. Two clutch free throws there. Third quarter ends on the Urban Group scoreboard. Gary County 60, Boyle 55. We'll take one final quarter break. We'll come back to you with fourth quarter action here on the Golden Line Sports Network. Bob Allen is a proud sponsor of Garrett County Basketball. Shop Bob Allen for a winning selection of new and pre-owned vehicles, all dealmaker priced. Click and save today at BobAllenMotorMall.com. At Central Kentucky Federal Savings Bank, we understand the meaning of commitment, hard work, and extra effort. Just like our Golden and Lady Lion teams, we're proud to be part of the tradition that makes our community special. Central Kentucky Federal Savings Bank, your hometown friends, your hometown bank. Garrett County is our special place. And that's why Hunt Insurance Agency is proud to serve the insurance needs of local businesses, families, and individuals. We build relationships that last because getting to know you and your personal needs is what we do best. Hunt Insurance Agency. Since 1951, Danville Office Equipment has dedicated itself to providing personal service and superior office products for our customers. We take a lot of pride in their success because that's how we measure ours. Danville Office Equipment, Danville, Lebanon, and Somerset. as we start the fourth quarter. Boatley, Fugit, Sula, Alcorn, and Cooper. Austin Adams is on the bench with four fouls. And You know, we saw Bull County extend by the seven-point lead in the third quarter, but then Garrett County come roaring back and ended up actually outscoring Bull County that quarter, 20-17. to 17. And outscored them 25-18 in the first. Yes. So we, we were down early in the first uh, and then have come back and won the last two quarters. Win, the, win this quarter, and you go to region. Alcorn to Boatley. Garrett being patient. No, no need to be in a hurry here. Let them come out. Let so, them come out. So for Garrett County, after three quarters, Cooper with 34, Adams with four, Boatley with six, Fugit with four, and Sula with 10. Fugit with the drive, no good, and they call oh, a charge. Oh, my word. Yeah, there's a lot of we, grimaces up here I, where I'm we, we can't, if you give them, oh, we got, we, we. Goodness. Woo. All right. Can't say nothing nice. <laughs> it's just hard on rate when, you know, so that, could, that air is not good either. So you say something, Caleb. Well, so after three quarters, Starter had 11 for Bull County, Quisenberry with 18, Bodner with two, Myers with three, Sloan with one, and Fort Turner with 14. Turnover there by by Boyle. Uh, tried to go to Turner and just a little, little, 
li little quick on the on the uh, on the pass. Okay, Cooper is cannot move from the bottom. Jaden O comes in the lineup replacing Braden Fugit. Mason Sula, I thought I don't know he was drinking had, had him drink of water, but he's still on the floor. Quisenberry Garden no, and bringing the double team. Lincoln's going to try to speed it up. Boatley comes around the corner, drives down corner for Alcorn. That would be big. Ooh, no good. That's good look. Rebound by rebound by Turner. Over to Tartar. Tartar, I thought he would drive there, Bodner, and then reverse it back around. Quisenberry, long three. Makes 60-58. 21 points on the night now for Montavion Quisenberry. And Boyle is definitely trying to speed up. No back to Alcorn. I, I, I really, I don't know what, I believe we need Fugit back. Uh, Boatley knocks it out of bounds on Alcorn. Boyle is turning up the pressure That's right. So if you're Gary County, just calm down, right? Kind of get back into your offense. Don't let them speed you up. Uh, uh, you know, use their aggression against them. So when they're extending their defense, kind of hit them with some back doors and hit them for a good uh, open shot on the, on the back end. 5.59 to go in the ball game. Ian Alcorn gets inbound, had Cooper, but that's all right, that's all right. Settle. Got to dribble, got to dribble. Noodle splits the double team, takes it to the lane, short and tartar with the rebound. And then no Noodle shouldn't have been there. Yeah, yeah. But but that's still not that's that's not a lot. That'll be uh, Demarion's fourth. That's gonna be one on one. So but, it's one of those things like when you when you know when, when you're on defense, if you reach for that ball, more likely you're gonna get called for an offense. Especially as you said, the tenor of the game, they're oh, trying yeah. to watch the cheap stuff. Uh, Fugit takes Boatley out. Tartar steps the line coming into the night, 61% on 75 attempts. 5.47 to go in the game. Gary leads by two. Well, folks, this last five minutes and 47 seconds left is going to be a lot of fun. Tartar to the line, misses. Cooper tips it. Alcorn with another big rebound. How many strong rebounds? And Sula, Sula is back deep, uh, anticipating the pressure. Uh, Cooper goes to Alcorn, down in the corner to Fugit. If you get back to Cooper. Guarded by Myers. Coach calls fist. Sula comes up. Cooper for two. Nice. Net did not move on that. Big shot there. Puts Garrett back up by four or five, 19 to go. 36 points on the night now for Ethan Cooper. Quisenberry on the wing, drives into the lane, splits defenders nice and lays move. it in. 23 points on the night now for Quisenberry. And that's a timeout by Boyle. That will be a 30, so we'll keep it here. Urban Group scoreboard shows 5.09 to go in the ball game. Garrett 62, Boyle 60. I tell you, folks, I feel like I've played. I mean, I mean the, the energy, the uh, our man Jeff Jacobs battling a lot of potential oh, technical issues up here. Thank goodness uh, we got a terrific ball game. Oh, my goodness. What a ball game here. Got a lot of well, wor well worth all the work, right, Jeff? <laughs> oh, it always yeah. is. You always want to be at your best on your big night. Yeah. My goodness. So, again, 5.09 to go in the fourth quarter. This is our second district semifinal. Winner will play Lincoln County in the district championship and, on uh, Friday night. And we said this, you know, in the, in the pregame. What a district! You know, you had you had overtime, two overtime games already. Uh, just so much parity in this district. You know, any of these teams uh, could win this district tournament. Jaden No to inbounds. Goes to Fugit. Fugit bringing across, guarded by Quisenberry. And again, Myers looking to screen. Fugit sees it, reverses, goes to the other way. Alcorn on the side, throws to no. Nice save, takes it to the rim. <sighs> Another good look, just left it, just short arming him. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Garrett's had three really good looks at the rim already in this quarter. Quisenberry for another three. No good, rebound tipped, and that's going to be Garrett Ball. Really yeah. surprised we got that call, but I'll take it. Oh, no, we get a foul call? Yeah, foul on Tartar. Foul that's, on Tartar. That's okay. a good call there by the officials there. Tartar is a really aggressive, uh, kind of maybe a little too aggressive there on the offensive rebound. For so that's County. third foul on Tartar, team ninth. Jaden No will step to the line shooting one and one. Two big free throws coming Jayden, out. Jaden 62 percent on the year, 42 attempts coming into tonight. Makes first. Ice in the veins for Jaden though. Jaden steps the line for the second again. 4.42 to go in the game. Rims long. Sula had it. Quisenberry comes down with it. 
Good defensive pressure. Turner waiting in the corner, and Fugit did a good job of hedging to help on Quisenberry while not leaving Turner, because he's been he's hot been, from three tonight. Yeah. Quisenberry into the lane. Tartar, no. Myers, head fake, and three, no good. Rebound. Tartar comes underneath, takes it away from Sula. Got to put a body on him. And what's that? A foul on Fugit? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I guess we're so high that it, you just yeah. can't see what's going on down there. That's a third on Fugit, and that will put Boyle in the double bonus. Austin Adams comes that's his in. That's fifth, Jeff. Fifth? Yep. So that's why he'd been sitting earlier. Yep, that's it. And you're going to file a guy out on that Ooh. call. I'm glad I, I just... Tartar misses the first. 63-60, Garrett, 416 to go. Bull will be in the double bonus moving forward here. And on the next foul, Garrett will as well. Yes. Bull's got nine. Tartar comes in 61% on 75 attempts. Misses both. Rebound by Sula. The ball don't lie, right? Exactly right. Except Fugit's still sitting yeah. on the bench. So that's Bodner. And now Cooper will have to take on a little more of the ball handling test. Takes it in the lane. Goes to Alcorn. He did. He got up in there that time. Uh, I don't. That. I don't know that that was a foul. No. Good job moving it to avoid the trap. Austin Adams for three. Blocked by Tartar. Tipped out of bounds and it stays Garrett Ball. Well, 353 to go. In I'm the not going to make you feel any better, but you shouldn't watch the replay on that if you get fourth. Uh, that fifth fall. Because it was. It was. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. It's. It's sisters of the polar yeah. week though. <laughs> um, hey, big possession coming up right here for Garrett County. Cooper to inbounds. No comes across. Alcorn off the screen, double screen, got to get it in, go up top to Adams, and Quisenberry steps under. You better not call a foil. You better not call a foul. So I, I, so you I tell you right now. You better. You better. So Quisenberry. He's, he's fly, every time he goes yeah. down, he gets a foul call, yeah. so you go down every time. Yeah. So, but Quisenberry, I think if Quisenberry wouldn't have went after that, I think that would been Bull County ball. Yeah, yeah, because so, it was right yeah. at the line. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Uh, Adams into no. No guarded by Turner. Quisenberry comes on the trap. No needs to pick it up. Goes to Adams, got to be getting close to 10. And how is that their ball? Adams had it. Myers knocks it out of bounds. Now, 10-second call, maybe. But yeah, veteran Garrett, crew or no veteran uh, crew, the wheels are coming off for the Zebras yeah, tonight. Yeah, Garrett's going to have to be able to kind of handle this Bull County pressure without breaking few get in the game. And that's going to be tough. And, yeah, and that that's a late call. Yeah. But that probably is a foul. Yeah. I mean, that probably is a foul right there. But Garrett's got to quit doing the – the uh, what is it? The the scorpion where you put your hands <laughs> over your head. So yeah. three thirty eight to go in the ball game. Garrett leads sixty three sixty. So that the, foul was on Ian Alcorn. Ian his second, no his first. Two shots for number five. Casey Myers fifty nine percent on the year on sixty four attempts. Makes the first sixty three sixty one. That's 10 points now for Casey Myers. Makes them both. 63-62. Into Cooper. Cooper hounded by Bodner and Quisenberry following, and then you're going to call that. Yeah. You're going to call that. And then Bodner says something to him, and you're not going to do anything about yeah. that. So if you're if you're not going to do anything, don't react to him. Just walk away. So two big free throws coming up here for Ethan Cooper for Garrett County. Bodner's yep. second foul. And I think that's, you know, without Braden Fugit in the game, I do think that's something you see Garrett County is going to do, break the press and immediately go in the offensive mode. Yeah, and, uh, and go to Cooper, which right. means Boyle's going to bring the double team that's right. uh, to that as they were trying to do. Cooper steps the line, makes the first, 64-62, And I love Ethan Cooper to go. being at the free throw line uh, for yeah. Garrett County. Can't, anybody, yeah. Nobody better for us. That's 37 points on the night now for Ethan Cooper. 3.33 to go in the ball game. Garrett up by two. Cooper makes both. Hey, Six board two. member Ethan Smith has checked in. There we go. So, Ethan is the man. My man, <laughs> Marvin Lane, has checked in saying, let's go, Garrett. Sean Paul level. This is the perfect district environment. I agree, Sean Paul. Three for Mason, or for Myers, and Sula with the rebound. Keeps it moving. Goes to Cooper. Big 3 position. 17 to go. Big position coming up here for Garrett County. Double team coming. Cross court to Alcorn. Issue is going to be: Do we have somebody else that's going to be ready to make nice cut? No dribbles under. Pick it up. Goes to Cooper. 
Back to no tipped, and Quisenberry comes up with it. Takes it into Adams, initiates contact. Adams does a good job of staying vertical to not get the foul call. 65-64, 2.52 to go in the third, and we get a timeout. a timeout. Garrett, and they're going to ask for a full. We're going to yeah. keep it here. Let's take a oh, break. Oh, no, we're not going anywhere. We're not going <laughs> anywhere. We're, we're I, done I running commercials and right. trying to get the auto right. right so we're going to stay right here. So right everybody's going to have to deal with Jeff and I. Yeah, that's right. I, I apologize. Nope, not going anywhere. So, again, you know, six, the Urban Group scoreboard, 65-64, two minutes and 49 seconds left here uh, in the fourth quarter here. Uh, you know, and if you're Garrett County, uh, you know, you had a lot of opportunities at the rim here. And, and I do think, again, Braden Fugate being out of the game, uh, fouling out of the game for Garrett County is big. You lost the ball handler. So I think what you're going to have to do for Garrett County is when you do have the opportunity to attack this aggressive defense for Bull County, go ahead and attack it. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Ethan Cooper has turned into the primary ball handler, you know, for Bull, I mean, for Garrett County. And one of the tendencies I think you got to watch with Garrett now is Fugit had the uh, – he was used to having the ball in his hands. The the other guards that are in the game now really aren't. Yes. Uh, a, as much as far as a penetrate and move. So, if we're going to – when the double teams comes to Cooper and Cooper passes, makes that pass to Alcorn, uh, we're going to have to have somebody that's going to be comfortable enough taking it to the rim. Jaden oh, yeah. took one in earlier with a nice drive, left the layup a little bit short. But we've got to keep, keep attacking. We, we, we can't just get the ball and then wait for Ethan to come back and get it and go in and do oh, yeah. something. We, we've got to be able to – so Gary, uh, Boyle lined up in full court man. No inbounding to Cooper. Quisenberry guarding. 2.47 to go. Long pass. Tipped by Tartar. Stays Gary Ball trying to get that one to Austin Adams. Randy McGuffey has checked in saying, let's go GC. Cooper has it up top. Calling for Alcorn to come. Goes to him, Alcorn guarded by Bodner. Alcorn a good senior. Nice drive, drops to Sula. Sula takes it up, oh. short. Good look, good yes. look. Great look. Myers brings it across. Takes it to the lane and that's a foul on Sula. That will be his fourth, I believe, Caleb. Yeah. 2.25 to go in the ball game. Yeah, and again, just again, Garrett County, I think that's the, maybe the fourth, maybe two foot shot that Garrett County's left just a little bit short here uh, in the fourth quarter. And I think what happened was, I think Mason kind of felt like uh, Tartar or someone had maybe fallen down there, and he's kind of having a hard time catching his footing there. And and Tartar did a good job, again, just going straight up, making him shoot over him. Uh, Myers, again, coming into tonight, 59% on 64 attempts. He's shot a couple. He'll be shooting two here, 225 to go in the So game. a mutual friend of ours, Wendell Cone, saying Sula's getting the shack treatment tonight. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. 65 all, 225 to go. And Myers steps to the line for the second. Demarion Boatley set to enter the lineup for Garrett. Rims in, 66-65, Boyle, 2.25 to go. Boatley takes Alcorn. That's 13 points on the night now for Casey Myers. And I'll be honest, Demarion hasn't been in in this you know, fourth quarter district semifinal game, but he's been willing to take oh, the ball yeah. to the basket no, too. No Show some aggressive. He's guarded by the eighth grader, Turner. Brings it across and trapped by Myers who takes it away from him. Myers goes back to Quisenberry, 214, and Quisenberry's going to sit out front. Another thing Boatley will do is come out and, and try to man up there with Quisenberry. You know, again, that, you know, not, not to keep harboring, but man, that fifth foul call on Braden Fugate is looming large for Garrett County. I got a bunch of words for him, most yeah. of which you're not supposed to say on the radio. So Bodner to Myers, and again, Boyle's going to be patient here. Coach Webb is saying spread it out and put it in Quisenberry's hands. He goes to the rim. And who is that going to be on? That's a late foul call. That's that's. And again, you kind of had Quisenberry driving it in. He kind of gives his body up, throws the ball in the air, and ends up getting a foul call. And that's on Boatley, his fifth. I, I don't. I'm going to try to watch our replay as our feed on on Kalen's laptop's a little behind us, so we get to see some of that. Alcorn's going to come in, a second fifth foul. Uh, I don't know. I, again, I, I'm trying to trying to be good. <laughs> Quisenberry to the line for two, makes the first. That is five points in a row well, after Garrett went up three. And uh, you know, Quisenberry's hard to officiate because he is strong. He's physical. He's quick. He kind of gets in the lane. He does distort his body and kind of throws the ball up in the air. Uh, and does kind of get a friendly whistle. And there. there's the 
strong double team on Cooper. Austin Adams comes to get it. Austin will take it across, guarded by Quisenberry. As they're double teaming Cooper with Bodner and Meyer, No brings it down, goes back to Cooper, and I doubt you'll see Bre Ethan get rid of it here without a shot going up. Minute 30 to go, three-point lead for Boyle. Cooper cutting into the lane. Bodner had a steal but didn't go get it. Sula has it, doesn't want to shoot, comes back to Cooper. Coach calls fist, minute 18 to go in the game. Sula sets the screen and rolls. They go to him. Quisenberry goes up and almost didn't get the foul called yeah, there. Yeah. I don't know what. So uh, two big free throws coming up here from Mason Sula. And Sula and Quisenberry, teammates, a couple of months ago, <laughs> uh, share some a friendly, I, I guess, oh, yeah. what appears to be, oh, be yeah. a friendly exchange. I know Mason went over and watched Mont uh, Tavy play in, uh, on Garrett's off week with Austin Adams. Sula makes the first. Soft shot. That's Sula 11 shoots points 66% on 50 attempts coming in. 65, 66, 110 to go in the ballgame. And what a ball game! Short and rebound tipped and surprise again, Tartar. I, I'm, we don't keep rebounds, but I know oh, he's, he's had a ton. He's been everywhere. Quisenberry up top, guarded by Alcorn. 56 seconds to go. Crosses over into the lane, underneath. Myers for three, nails it. That hurts. 71-66, five-point lead goes to Cooper, 47 seconds. Cooper into the front court, shoots the three. No good, rebound Tartar off the board. Bodner, now you got a foul. Alcorn makes the foul, that I believe will be his second. 38.9 seconds to go. Boyle County 71, Garrett 66. Yeah, you know, two big free throws coming up here for Avery Bodner. You know, the, the, fifth, the, the fifth foul call on Fugate absolutely has hurt Garrett County. Now, being fair, you know, man, Garrett County's missed four or five shots right at the yeah. rim uh, here in this fourth quarter. You give Garrett those eight to ten points, uh, you know, Garrett's got a pretty nice commanding lead even right now. Right, right. Bodner comes to the line shooting 67% on 34 attempts, makes the first. 72-66, again, 38.9 seconds to go. That's three points now for Avery Bodner. All three points have, have come from the free throw line. Second shot is up and good. 73-66 Boyle, and that's a Boyle County, I believe a Boyle County timeout. We're gonna stay here. It's a full timeout. Urban Group scoreboard shows 38.9 seconds remaining in the contest. Excuse me, Boyle County 73, Gary County 66. So, you know, Gary County is going to need a few things really going in their direction here. You know, down seven points, 39 seconds left here uh, in this ball game here. So it does make it, uh, you know, pretty tough on Gary County. Uh, Gary County needs a basket and, and probably needs a turnover and a basket to kind of get right back in this game. And so so we, we got the opportunity to set up the play. They're going to show what they're going to do. And Boyle has been double teaming Cooper with a seven point need. You may not, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if they'll go stronger with that or if they'll uh, if they'll let off. Uh, you know, some teams would probably take the approach. We're going to let somebody else, make somebody else beat us uh, with, with under a minute to go in the game. Um, and again, that will, uh, uh, we'll see what, what uh, Garrett comes out with. Uh, the winner of this game again will play Lincoln County, who defeated Danville in overtime. overtime. Uh, Danville uh, Monday night, Danville plays in the 4 or 5 game. DCA beats DCA by two in overtime. overtime. And then Lincoln wins in overtime by four. I don't remember the yeah, final score. So. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so Garrett will inbounds coming along court, full court. Quisenberry now on Cooper. And Turner helping off on him. Cooper rolls around, no into Alcorn. Alcorn brings it across midcourt, takes it to the basket, tries to go to Sula. Sula down on the floor, Cooper down on the floor, and we got a timeout. Good call because if either of them, now let's, if either of them tried to get up, you were going to yeah. get a travel. Oh, yeah, that's so right. that's a timeout, Garrett. It'll be Garrett ball underneath. You know, good call, good foul call by their head coach, Brandon Cooper. Yeah, big, big timeout. And need to get some sweat off the floor there. Well, so I would tell you this again. I mean, Braden Fugate went out of this game and really changed the game. But I, but again, I, I'm going to give you know Danny Webb from Bull County a lot of credit. You know, Garrett County looked like Garrett County's in a great spot, up four or five points. Uh, seemed like everything was kind of going in Garrett County's direction. 
and, and man, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Danny Webb a lot of credit. He really turned up the pressure, uh, extended the the full court defense, uh, and man, it has really impacted and bothered Garrett County here tonight. And I'll say this: the offside, I've, I've talked we've talked a lot about the Fugit foul. Part of that though is you got four fouls. Don't stick your hand in it. Yeah. You know yeah. You, you you can't you can't. Now I, I don't know that he I don't know that he was as close as. Well, I don't know that he felt like he was sticking his hand in there. Well, here's, here's but, what but, I would tell you. When I went back and watched the replay, you know, you can't see exactly. But Tartar never makes a movement. So, you know, you think if Tartar got popped in the, in the face, which is what the official called, you would think Tartar would have some sort of a response yeah. and really didn't have a response. So, but, you know, at the end of the day, Garrett County has had a lot of missed opportunities at the rim here yeah. uh, in this fourth quarter. So, Garrett will inbounds underneath 29.2 seconds to go, 73-66 Boyle. No, Alcorn, Adams, Sula, and Cooper. And they got the floor, I believe, cleaned up there. Cooper comes, Cooper sets the screen for Sula, pops out for three, uh -huh. shoots the three over Quisenberry, no good. Loose ball, no fighting for it, and. We just lost our signal. We're not on. Yeah, yeah that's close enough. Ain't enough to see. Hang on, let's see here, hang on. Let's see if it comes back on. I'm telling you guys, this, this night was snake bit. That's just all there was to it. Well, I've lost 15 pounds sweat. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, we just, we're, we're done. I don't know what's going on. We're done. I don't know what happened. Everything just went blank. This machine was just not happy tonight. So we, we're we done? Yep, we're done. That's it. 